Uh, hi everyone, uh, I am Raul Benitez. I'm from Paraguay. I'm not English speaker. So if you hear something, if you cannot understand or is not clear, please let me know. I will clarify for you. All the questions related with my topic, I will I will answer in the end of the presentation. Um, I will talk about Manatee, a web assistant for threat analysis supported by domain similarity. I am a member of the Stratofree Free Project. Manatee and Stratofree Free Project is somehow related, so it's important to talk about that. Stratofree, uh, we are working in Stratofree Free doing free protection for NGOs around the world, uh, reporting or dealing with their, their cyber security incident. We are in the Czech University of Prague, and we are working with security and machine learning. Also, we had a free software uh, for instruction prevention system. And here's the link if you want to take a look about that. Uh, so, what is Manatee? Manatee is a web-based system to analyze, store, and organize web blocks faster for or in a threat analysis team. What is the purpose of Manatee? Manatee has a threat analysis team to make their work faster and more effective. Before to get deep in the, in the topic, I will tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I, I, I said I am from Paraguay. I'm a master student in C2, member of the strategy project. I am web developer. But nowadays, I am changing a little bit. So I am working with uh, cyber security people and cyber security environment. So all of this for me is kind of new. I am a photographer aficionado. Um, here is my contact if you want to stay in touch. Uh, the co-author of Manatee, Sebastian Garcia, he's the founder of Startup Free Project, creator of Startup Free Instruction Prevention System. He's a very good researcher in cyber security using machine learning. Well, uh, before to talk uh, about the thematic, I would like to put some basic knowledge and some very technical words that I will use during the talk. Uh, first of all, I would like to talk about web blocks. What are web blocks? Well, they are records or log of the web traffic that are being stored by server, router, honeypot, computer, etc. So every time that we are getting or we are using web protocol, HTTP, HTTPB or HTTPS, we are using uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, technology. And these connections are being recorded for uh, any kind of server. Also, uh, we will deal a little bit about who is information, who is information or who is data, is the information that we provide to the registrant when we want to buy a domain name. Uh, most of the, the reg registrant has different structures, so but most of them has the same fields. So this kind of uh, complicated to deal with this with their structures. This information is public and everyone can access them. And the last. Uh, word is IOCs, indicator of compromise. I I met some people that know this uh, uh, this meaning. Um, it's an artifact in computer security area that we can observe in a network or in a operating system that is saying that something is happening in your uh, in your environment. Uh, but for this talk, we'll be use IOCs that the meaning for domain names or destination IP addresses. Right. Let's move on to analysis malware behavior. What it is. First of all, I would like to know if some of them are analysts or working with threat analysts or working with malware behavior in the room. Uh, hello. I am new in this. I am developer and working with these researchers. I'm not uh, 
very good threat analysis. So if I say something, please just let me know and we can learn together. Okay, uh, in one pointed word, analysis of malware behavior means the art of understanding the traces of the malware in network logs. It's to read, analyze, identify malicious abuses, determine malware behavior and report the infection if it exists. But what, what is determine or determine malware? What is determine the malware behavior? How will the analyst determine the malware? Well, they need to find traces of the malware in the logs that we were talking before, the wet logs. But again, what are the traces? They are record of the connection of the malware inside the infected device with the internet or with the, or with the command control. So these traces uh, typically or typically are in the web protocol. Why? Because the most of the company block all the ports in the firewall. So no one or inside or outside the company can use the, the ports that they are not using for, for providing services. So they used to open just port for HTTP connection. It means 80 and 8080. I think most of you know that. So that is why we are focusing in Manati to work with web blocks. Because the most malware are using web traffic for their infections. So this leads us to what the threat analysis does. Uh, I will summarize the threat analysis work, but I, I, I said I'm not an expert in threat analysis, so if I forgot something, please let me know. First of all, they need to open the web blocks. That is important. They need to visualize and understand the behavior of the malware. They need to see the pattern. They need to see the URL. They need to see the information. Then they need to filter the information. You cannot see, I don't know, 100 megabytes of information. It's just the traffic of one computer in, I don't know, two hours, three hours. So they need to filter and searching. They need to filter and looking for patterns and Typically, the threat analysis, they know some uh, proper words and they know some uh, regular expression that they, they used to they used to for that. So they, they need to use some tool for that. Labels IOC. This is important. What does it mean, labels, uh, labeling IOCs? When we find some IOCs that you believe that is good, you put a verdict or you place a verdict. If it's malicious, you put another verdict. So, this is the world of the threat analysis. They are putting labels for each web block or each IOCs. The verdict can be uh, legitimate, that is obvious for safe IOCs, uh, malicious for unsafe IOCs, that is, uh, they are pretty sure that this IOC is being used for in a bootnet, in a botnet, or in spam campaigns, or something, something like that and also fall positive or, or suspicious. Once they, once they finish with this, uh, well, before of that, how they know about the IOCs? In internet, there are plenty of databases, people working in this area, and so they report the domain. So they can took the domain and say, okay, this domain is malicious because it's been used uh, in this botnet, or been, is being used in for cheating or something like that. And so this kind of website, they are called reputations, indicators. And there are a lot of them, but uh, the most uh, I, I use a lot, and, and they are very well known, are Baris Total and Passive Total. I think most of the people here uh, know about, about that. And so they are using this website to share the information and to share uh, uh, IOCs malicious and IOCs legitimate. Once they uh, label 
all the web logs or all the information in one web log, then they start to identify patterns. They start to identify behavior in the in the web log. They start to identify the malware. Um, once they identify the malware, but sometimes they don't identify the malware. They are just guessing which malware is, but they can identify the type of the malware, so they can report it. Report this incident and say, okay, this device is infected. So you need to do something about that. And this is a cycle. No? So they are getting uh, web logs and, and looking for looking information about that and and reporting. So this is the work of the threat analysis. Typically, they work with uh, one machine, one client uh, in one day traffic. So it's a lot of data that they're they are working. As you see, there is a lot of work to be done. So how do they perform their tasks? What are the tools that the analysts use right now in the current state? Well, how I say they need to visualize the web log, so they're using some kind of log viewer, uh, Apache log viewer, log expert, uh, Sublime, text notes, or, and, and the like. Also, they're using for uh, Linux, uh, Unix terminal brings with a lot of well-known tools uh, that most of, of us here, maybe one point in our life, we, we use it, like Bean or WC or, or IWK or Grip. And also, most of the people right now are using big data analysis tool for, for this kind of work, like Splunk. But having seen all these tools, the, the threat analysts, are still facing problems, such as huge amounts of data. I, I said there are a lot of data to analyze. If you see your, just your traffic in one day, of work, normal working day, it's a lot. Labeling data, this is a very uh, process that not everybody wants to do. It's very tiring because you need to analyze each IOC and each web log in the, in the web file and put a and put a, a place about it. Uh, also, because they are working alone in computer, maybe they work in a team. Most of the cases they are repetitive. They are doing repetitive tasks. Uh, also, they had some script, but not for all the cases. Much of the knowledge uh, coming from the analysts might be lost over time. In the world. For, in the workflow that I already explained, learned knowledge or the label of IOCs are not shared or saved. In most of the cases, the regular expressions is remembered to determine well-known patterns in URL, but there is more information lost there. So it is difficult and tiresome. So we can agree that it's very hard to, uh, to deal with it. Taking into consideration all of these problems mentioned, it was obvious we need to find a proper solution, something that will help us all our issues. That is the principle of manati, that manati must respect. First of all, manati must be fast. That seems important. There are many, many malware created every day, and the threat analysis must deal with all of them. A storage and working team. When you put all the data in one storage, in one place, you can share this information with the rest of the team and avoid repetitive tasks, um, overlapping actions in the same analysis. Graphic user interface. This is good because uh, you put a lot of tools just in one place. If using the hotkeys, they can get better and faster analysis and be more effective. Uh, also, most of the researchers are using or they create their own scripts. So they want to use their own script or their own intelligence in Manatee. 
So we provide an API and a class inter interface so they can put the module there and, and use it. And the last one, but not for that, the less important, uh, mach machine learning algorithm. That is one of the key of Manatee that we want to provide and we are doing, creating some algorithm for increased detection of malwares and, and so on. This is the work for Manatee. Uh, the analyst only is working with the user interface. They don't care about the structure. They don't care about the architecture. They don't care about nothing. So they are using the, the graphic user interface with a lot of JavaScript implementation to make the, the interaction fast and good. Then this, in, this information is synchronized with the cloud. Uh, but uh, Manatee was, Manatee can work as a service, but uh, we recommend to use Manatee in a small group of people or in a land or for a limited number of users. Because when you are working with bit, bit files, uh, you have a delay when you want to upload files in the internet. And then you have the backend server that is connecting with the API and the interface. Uh, class interface that all the modules are are created, and this part is working in background. So the, if you create a module, this is totally transparent for the user, and they they don't need to know about that. I will talk a little bit about Manatee basic features and usability. First of all, we create the concept of analysis stations and multi-users. Uh, analysis session is when you create a, or you upload, uh, upload a file and you start the analysis. You can share this analysis for the people in your team or you can make this analysis pri private just for yourself. Uh, this is the basic interface. I don't know if clear there of Manatee. Uh, it's a dynamic table. Uh, so you can up upload the file there, and you had a lot of uh, input to, for example, you had the input to put the regular expression or find for any word that you want to do. It's clear. Okay. Um, you can search for any words, or you can sort the information where you want. You can move the tables and so on. I will put some demo about humanity. Uh, I think it's working. Yes. Uh, the example is using a HTTP log that is pro, pro produced by Bro tool. That is the kind of uh, tool that we are using in Stratoferry to create our data sets of malware uh, traffic. Uh, also, we had the web of labeling that I, I was talking about. Uh, we can mark the web of that we want to put the verdict and, and do it. We had, we can place a verdict per web block or selecting. I, I think it's what you're watching. Sorry, there is a situation here. Okay, I will start it over again. I am not. Ah, okay. I know why it's not uh, reproducing the video, okay. Uh, but it's the, the video is only showing how uh, you can do bulk labeling, so you can select one web block and select all the web blocks that are related with it. Also, you can export the data in different format. I think something is... I know why, what can be with the presentation, get stuck. Okay, I will refresh the page. Yeah, I know. Maybe the connection is bad.
I know what happened with the presentation. The bad thing is I don't have the Okay, I will use this. Uh, uh, I will use this because I know what happened in the life. Uh, so you can export the information, the, the information of the dynamic table in different format with the labels. That is something good, so they can use this information for uh, sharing the data in the team or sharing to the bosses or for the client. Um, provide comments. You can do comments per web log or per analysis, that is something good. Uh, you can see all the changes that one weblog is, or one weblog has, because one user can do different changes in one weblog, but also the models can do changes in the weblogs. This is something we were talking about virus total and passive total in the beginning. And so Manatee put all these tools in one place, so you can select one IOC and see the information uh, about that in the in this model, for example. Uh, in Manatee, we had the statistics and metrics. We get some information from the user and try to show this information so how so the the user can know how better they're getting in the in the manatee on how many weblogs they are they are labeling or how many weblogs they need to label or or something something like that external models we were talking about the api uh, so they can pro they can create their own scripts um for detecting malware behavior or for increasing the number of labels they are, that they are doing and this is a very hard uh, implementation because we put the we believe that the human has the reasons and manatee is for assist the humans so manatee cannot uh, put the labels uh, alone so when the models are working we put the privilege for the human so uh, one human can the the user can put the one verdict to one weblog, but the model can say no. This this weblog has another verdict. So so we had a complete process for merging verdicts. So we notify to the user that okay, maybe this weblog is a different verdict and so on. Um, this is the part of researching in my work. I've been working in with the Whois information. The Whois information has been studied for detecting malware behavior. Uh, we try to create a distance between two domains. This is very tough and, and very complicated. Or like, it's very uh, complicated because it's a new concept. We, create, we want to create a numeric distance between two domains. Um, theoretically, two domains that belong to the same purpose or for the same company, they are somehow more close than domains that belong for different purpose or different company. One example is here, uh, is taking the google.com and facebook.com, taking all the information, the whois data, and using less than this string distance between them, and this is the information that you can see uh, here, and then the total distance is in the end, so it's doing a, a sum up of the distance. This feature also is part of Manatee, so you can select the web blocks and say, okay, all the domains that are related with um, this domain, and you will see all the information in the uh, in the model, and also you can see all the details inside. It's very hard to work with Whois information because, uh, as I said in the beginning, the registrant don't provide the same structures. And sometimes, if you want to say, want to see a Whois information from Argentina or from Paraguay, 
uh, you cannot because they need to, you need to contact the registrant there, so it is very hard to get the information. So how uh, the, these algorithms say that two domains are related or not? Okay, right now in the current state in Manatee, is it just a threshold? We took thousands of domains, malicious and legitimate. We created distance between all of them. And we put the, the best threshold that we could find. That is the easy way to do. The results are not very good because it's just a threshold. It's nothing, nothing important. But the idea that we are finishing now, and maybe for the the end of the year, will we upload this uh, this information? Is to use machine learning, uh, some classifier that we are working to uh, predict with high accuracy uh, if two domains are related or not. Um, who is similarity distance is part of Manatee, but also if you want to just use the script, you can take a look in the repository that is open source and free for all of you. Uh, contribution of Manatee, all the tools that the threat analysis use just in one place. Uh, it's scalable, scalable because it's, uh, it's Manatee is done in Django and Python. So it's very easy to create a new script and put more uh, features. Uh, a novel who is distant measure, that is something nice because we want to, one feature that we want to add is select one IOC that is legit legitimate and mark all of them as of all of the domains related with it as legitimate or malicious and, or, or something. Century related. Uh, with the metrics, we create a fierce verification performance for threat analysts so we can measure how good they are using Manatee or, or, or comparing with the normal work that they are doing every day or the normal way they are doing. Uh, future Manatee. How I say, for the end of the year, we want to put the, finish the algorithm for who is similarity distance using machine learning. I use this labeling. And right now, you, we can just label web blocks, not only the IOC, so we want to put this functionality. That is very close to be done. In, importance for labels, so you can have a huge data set of, of the domains with labels. Um, we can upload to Manatee to create more intelligence. Uh, that is one of the first things that we want to do, but we couldn't, is to become Manatee as a web page for a start of intrusion prediction system. So in the future, the people working with NetFlows uh, will be very glad to use Manatee for, for that. Uh, add more type, of, more type of file. Right now, is using just blog files and one specific file of the company that is supporting us. Um, we want to do malware detection. The people working with threat analyst, uh, the analysis, they know that they cannot trust totally in the algorithms because the errors are too large for them yet. So we want to do malware detection just to show the information are just to uh, create prediction, but not take the decisions. Um, one thing that we want to do is update learning to start to learn from the users, um, increase the, uh, the, the, the work of the, the analyst, and we are open for the communities. If you have something for us, if you want to do your thesis, master, bachelor thesis, uh, please contact us. We had topics, or if you had your own topics, please lend us, lend us us. Uh, conclusion. Manatee is a novel tool to facilita facilitate the work. It's high functional and scalable. It's user-friendly, that's good. Um, can increase the number of labeling. We test that. Uh, that is the part of the experiments. We test that Manatee can increase uh, the number of level in a factor of 3.4. 
Um, today we are releasing as uh, open source, so now it's in GitHub. You can take a look. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for being here. It's my first time doing the conference, so I'm glad for that. And if you had a question about Manatee, please let me know. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Raul. Question over there. I, I, <coughs> yeah, hi. <laughs> uh, thanks for your presentation. It's very interesting. Uh, I read uh, the code uh, now for your uh, for the distant width. You use uh, Levenstein distance between strings. Uh, it's n it's not a bit um, uh, the complexity of the processing is not uh, is not too big because you you must compare uh, n square. If you are, have n domain, mm -hmm. so it's it's not uh, what uh, what do you what do you do for scale up the the process the process? Well, uh, this that is the first time that I think about the complexity of my algorithm uh, because it was just a researching. But it's a good question. I didn't have a lot of problem to process the distance uh, because the algorithm is well known and I know it's very good. But the real problem that I had was to create the who is database. Because maybe here in Europe, the, there are some good organizations, so you can see all the fields and all the information, all the structures. But if you get domain from the, I know, Thailand or to some country in South America, uh, the structure is different, and, and you need to connect the servers and register them to the library. So this is more the problem that uh, we had to deal with that. Uh, okay, thanks. Thank you. Uh, more questions? More questions? Okay, well, thanks, Raul. Thank you.